Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. So since we've been on um, stay-at-home order, we've been doing something called mystery stamping. I've been doing the clean videos for the cards after we played the game, and so you might have seen some of those. Today, I thought I'd start with a little introduction of mystery stamping, and then we'll get to the card that we're gonna do. So on Wednesdays, in the morning, I put up clue one for our mystery card. The clues for this week's card were solid color cardstock, five and a half by seven and a half, scored at three and a quarter. So I got that one. Solid color cardstock. This one's two and a half by eight and scored at four inches. All right, next clue. Solid color cardstock scraps for punching. So I've got my scraps. This is pear pizzazz, um, so saffron, and whisper white. I need another little scrap of so saffron. I don't know where it got off to. No, oh, whisper white cardstock, about a die cut shape, about three inches by three inches. Whisper white cardstock, smaller than three by five and a quarter. Now these I die cut ahead of time just according to the clues. This is um, two and seven eighths inch circle and that's from the Stitched Shapes die set. It's the largest one. And then for mine I chose for a Whisper White cardstock smaller than three by five and a quarter. I chose the Stitch So Sweetly die set and did a three and five eighths by two and a half um, stitched scallop rectangle. My designer series paper is four by five and a half. So I give the clues ahead of time without anybody seeing my pieces. They have to collect those pieces for themselves. Next up on my list of clues are image stamps. So I chose honeybee and sentiment stamps. I'm gonna use the same honeybee stamp set. Background stamp, I'm gonna use artisan textures. An embossing folder, I've got this 3D wreath folder from Stampin' Up, it's on the retirement list. Punches, so you have gotta do a little bit of planning ahead of time because you gotta know what color cardstock you're gonna use, so what punches. I've got my medium daisy, my sprig punch, and my half inch circle punch. Then ink pads to coordinate with your designer series paper and images. I've got soft suede, terracotta tile, daffodil delight, and then some ribbon, lace, twine, or trim of your choice I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the white, Whisper White Crinkle Seam Binding ribbon for my design. So on Wednesday morning, you get the list, you think about your materials and how they coordinate and collect your supplies. Then on Thursday at 2 p.m. Central Time, I give another series of clues on what to do with these items to build the card. Now this is my mystery card, and we're gonna do a video tutorial for this fun Joy Fold card. So it's a lot of fun. You kind of go into it a little bit blind. Um, when I'm, when I'm um, helping somebody through the first set of clues, I like to tell them to start with the designer series paper and then choose um, card stocks according to the measurements that coordinate, stamp set that goes together. And then once you've got a stamp set designer series paper and your card stocks all chosen, all the measurements and stuff are in the um, clues, then you're pretty much ready to go and together we put together your card. Then everybody's card turns out so different because you all just had a list of clues and we share those cards on the craft social. So I'm hoping that maybe getting a little taste of um, what Mystery Stampin' is, what the mystery card is all about, maybe you'll come and join us and give it a try. There's a link below the video to join the craft social. So you can see I took my um, seaside spray card and I glued my four by five and a quarter designer series paper inside. Now we're going to set that aside for a minute. We need to do a little bit of stamping. I need some scratch paper here. I have my little Stampin' Up mini grid paper. Let's get that one. I'm going to stamp a little background image. So we want to make sure that we've folded our eight 
by two and a half so that the fold is on the right side. It's a little unnatural, but make sure that it's there. I'm gonna do terracotta tile ink, and I've got this fun spatter image from um, the Artisan Textures stamp set. This Artisan Textures stamp set is on the retirement list currently. I love this little spatter. It's one of my go-to um, texture stamps. I'm just going to stamp a little bit up off the right and a little bit down off the left. So we're going to add a little texture to that piece. Now I want to clean this off because we're going to use it again. We're going to use it with Daffodil Delight, so we want to make sure we get it clean. Got my simple chamois. I'm going to wipe away all that terracotta tile ink. Telling you this little texture comes in handy all the time. All right, make sure it's nice and clean. Let's get Daffodil Delight ink, and I have a little tiny scrap here. This is going to be our flower center, and I don't want a plain Jane yellow flower center. I want some texture, so we're going to stamp that in Daffodil Delight. Next, we're going to stamp our little beehive. I love this honeybee bundle. We're featuring it in the kitchen table stamper online classroom for May. Um, you can get the honeybee bundle while supplies last and the kitchen table stamper honeybee sweet treats class is open for registration through May 8th, 2020. So if you want to get your hands on a class with this awesome bundle, buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com and check out the Honeybee online classroom. All right, we can set that guy aside. Now we need a little bit of soft suede ink and some Whisper White scraps. I've got this fun wishing you sunshine and happiness greeting. I love this curved greeting. We're gonna stamp that across the top of our stitched circle. Soft suede. And then we're going to stamp a couple of bees, the little bee. There's a big bee and a little bee in this set. And we're going to do two little ones. Soft suede on Whisper White. All right. Love it. Let's slide the ink pads to the side. And we're going to grab our big shot and... Our honey, or our detailed bee dies, so we can pop out those two shapes. Our die cutting is going to take two passes through the machine because we've got one bee die. So let's go ahead and set this guy up, crank it through. I'll get them all cut out and meet you back here. We're going to emboss our card front next. All right, running through our second bee. We're going to pop aside the B and take off all of the plates and the thin die adapter. Now we've got our card front and the wreath embossing folder. Let's go ahead and add a little gorgeous texture to kind of peek up behind our B. What I did was I put my wreath so that it went all the way to the fold and then the edge of the card all the way to the bottom of the folder. It's going to go, the wreath is going to go off the right side, the open side of the card. Just pop that into our machine. We need one cutting plate on the top. We'll give that a crank. Make sure everything's all square. You don't want to um, abrade the fold on your embossing folder off. And if it scrapes against the edge of the machine, you will grate the plastic and you'll end up with a folder that doesn't have a fold. It has two parts, two pieces. So be careful, square it all up before you crank it through. All right, next up, we're going to do a little bit of coloring. I got my bees. I would have colored them before, except we're using soft suede ink, and I wanted to give the ink a little bit of time to dry because the soft suede is not non-reactive. The alcohol will pick up the pigments from the soft suede that we stamped in, so give it a second to dry, and then you're going to just touch a little bit of dark so saffron 
and a little bit of light daffodil delight on our B stripes. I love the depth that this tiny little detail of bringing the dark daffodil delight along the edge of the B brings. It really makes our B look like he's got a nice round body. All right, now I've got Seaside Spray Combo and we need our, our scratch paper again. I'm gonna fold it up because I don't want to um, soak through to my work surface. I'm really protecting my work surface here. Got some Whisper White Crinkled Seam Binding. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our light seaside spray and we're gonna run the brush point of the marker straight down the right side of the ribbon. Then we're going to take the dark seaside spray. We're gonna do the same thing only on the left half of the ribbon. This will give us kind of a soft ombre of seaside spray crinkle seam binding ribbon. Really a gorgeous ribbon and super flexible because it can be any color if you've got the Stampin' Blends. So that should be good. You want about eight or nine inches tops and we need to let that dry for just a minute. Well, that dries for just a minute. Let's grab our multi-purpose liquid glue card base and that piece of terracotta tile cardstock. You want to have the fold on the right. We're going to glue on the back. And then we're going to marry these two pieces together. Now we want the edge, the fold of the terracotta tile to line up with the edge of your designer series paper. So what that's going to give you is an even seaside spray border on each side of your terracotta tile. You're going to lift, burnish, and then we can fold that back up. We've got wishing you sunshine and a little beehive. I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals here. We're going to bump our beehive onto the Wishing You Sunshine and Happiness circle. Stampin' Dimensionals are all sticky. What we want to do is very carefully line up our little beehive so that it's nestled underneath our greeting. Then we're going to take our paper snips and cut the excess right off the bottom. Such a cutie. Let's go ahead and adhere this to our card front. Don't bring the glue all the way up to the top. The circle is going to extend past the terracotta tile base. I'm going to go about 3 eighths, quarter of an inch from the bottom and about the same from the left side edge of your terracotta tile. Burnish that guy down. Make sure your sentiment reads level and your beehive isn't on a slant. We're getting closer. I've got some scraps to punch. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a half inch circle and punch for our flower center. Got Whisper White and the Medium Daisy Punch. Let's punch three of these little daisies. Notice how if you kind of toggle them up and down, you can get more daisies from your from your cardstock. Just a little tip there, save some, some cardstock. I've got my bone folder now, and we're going to just hold onto the bone folder and very gently roll the petals over the edge of the bone folder. That's my Chicks Paper Ink bone folder. Did you know that if you join the kitchenettes, if you become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you join the kitchenettes, you are also a member of Chicks Paper Ink? I don't know if you know that. Isn't that pretty cool? All right, so we're just rolling these guys very gently. Don't pull the petal off. You're going to do all three. So we've got all three of our little daisies. Now what we want to do with the 
petals rolled back toward the table. We're going to put some multi-purpose liquid glue on the center of our first daisy. Then we're going to add our second daisy over top with the petals rolled up toward the ceiling. Just alternating the petals a little bit. Next, multi-purpose liquid glue on the back of our third daisy. And we're going to turn that so that the petals reach up toward the ceiling. So there's our little daisy dude. Let that dry for a second. Um, if you have to, twist the flowers a little bit so that the petals fill in pleasingly all the way around the flower. You might have to give it a little shift. I've got my sprig punch here. We're gonna punch a couple of sprigs. Two of those. On the back of the daisy, let's add a little multi-purpose liquid glue. And then we can drop those little sprigs right in there. We just want the leaves to extend past the petals. Need a little more glue. There we go. There's our daisy. Set that aside for a second. I'm going to put a stamp in dimensional and I'm going to tuck it right in against my beehive. Peel off the excess and then I'm going to add my daisy so that it doesn't cover the sentiment. It doesn't cover the little door to the beehive and so that the sprigs are within the folds of the card. So I got that guy on there right on that dimensional. Here's the center of our flower. Got my take your pick tool with the large stylus attachment. I'm going to use the mat for the dye brush attachment for take your pick tool. So I've got the black mat. We're going to put the center of the flower face down on the black mat and we're going to press in with the cap with the putty end of the take your pick tool and then just run circles inside with the large stylus end. What you're, what you're doing there is kind of paper tolling. You're making yourself like a little button from that circle. Now inside the little cup that you've just made, you're going to add a couple of mini Stampin' Dimensionals. We're going to put one and then we're going to stack up a second one right on back of that one. There's the center of our flower all sculpted. Ooh, we're getting there. So cool. Now this card has already got a dimensional below the flower, a double dimensional behind the center. So we're going to go ahead and go big or go home. I'm going to fold up the bee's wings just a little bit and add a mini Stampin' Dimensional to the back of the bee. One of them is going to be floating off or flying off over that wreath embossing and the other one is going to be on the hive kind of crawling around love that we're almost there two more little touches let's bring our sample in here we're going to stamp a greeting inside the card now I've got the other greeting from the honeybees it says thinking of you sweet friend soft suede ink I'm going to go ahead and stamp that centered on my stitched scallop rectangle. I love the mix of the script and the print. The greetings in this honeybee set are just so classic in their style and sweet in their sentiment. All right, so we've got our dry seaside spray crinkle seam binding here. We're going to tie a little bow. Well, it's a, kind of a big bow actually. It's such pretty effect. We're going to go kind of large with it here. A little loopy. All right. I'm happy there with that. Let me grab some ribbon scissors and we'll cut. I'm going to switch the angle on this side. Trim away on that side. 
let's go ahead and adhere our bow with a mini glue dot. Just pick it right up on the knot and then tuck it into the petals of the daisy. So sweet. All right, that side's a little long still. There we go. And lastly, thinking of you, friend, let's pop that on the inside of the card. Got some multi-purpose liquid glue all the way around there. And now we want to make sure that this is off left of center so that when we close the left side, it doesn't show at all. <laughs> there it is. That's our mystery card. So you start out with a list of clues. I suggest that you run over to the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social and see how everybody else's Joy Fold card turned out. Let me tell you, it is so inspiring. You're going to love it. You're going to want to play along next time. If you've got questions about the Joy Fold, about Coffee and a Mystery card, Thursdays at 2 p.m., if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and to get your hands on these awesome retiring products the honeybee bundle the wreath 3d embossing folder and this gorgeous woven threads designer series paper buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net thanks for watching